Hi everybody, so this is Aaron for AOP Tech and I wanted to take you through the WeDo app. So this is the, I just started and now I'm running this on my Windows 10 PC. I've also run this app on my Chromebook. In both instances, the app function the same way. It's also available on Mac and Linux and a whole bunch of other platforms, mobile as well. So it starts off with this little welcome screen and telling you how to connect things. We're going to just keep going. And then you can either click on get started or X out. So it brings you to this kind of main screen right here. Now I'm pretty sure that the teacher's resource button exists there for kids as well. So just be aware of that. Uh, there's not like there's any answers or anything in there. And I mean, they can click on it, but it's not going to be anything really exciting for them. And then we have a link to classroom projects. So this is the 32 projects plus the three that were on the website that I covered in the previous AOP Tech We Do Resources video, which will probably be linked over there, over there, somewhere in this playlist on YouTube and certainly on our resources document. So here are all the, so you can have kids jump directly to a particular one. And we have the, it is organized science, and then these kind of getting started. These getting started activities really kind of teach you like how the different sensors work and what they do. And it, it's all based off of a really simple build. So you can move through these getting started resources pretty quickly. I'm going to jump back to the home screen up top here. So that, that was, we clicked on this classroom projects button. Now as a teacher, this teacher's resource button. Most of these are going to take you to external links on the website or they're going to uh, offer you PDFs to download. Now, while I'm kind of up in this general section, up here, the cogwheel, I found kind of a, the hidden teacher guide in there that, so obviously if you want to change your language, introduction, but if you come down here to teacher guide, this is where I found that computational thinking teacher's guide. I didn't find that online. Certainly not in this form, I mean, maybe I just didn't find the right link, but I found it here. And then, so these other guys are also available online. This button here would be if you want students to jump to a specific project. This button, if you were wanting, wanting them to work through at least the getting started section on their own. Certainly some options. Uh, coming down here, you can click on, this is kind of your blank working space here. This is all block-based coding. You can drag and drop different boxes. I highly recommend the, the, the toolbox guide because it actually explains what a lot of these do, um, how they work, how to use them. So you can make loops and stuff like that. And you can have it go like that. And then there's a stop button. Over here, this is the, it uses Bluetooth to connect to the smart hub. You turn it on. I've had it work really, really well. Um, again, you just have to make sure the Bluetooth is on on the device. That's going to be something that as a teacher, you might want to check just to make sure sometimes the IT departments disable that function. So you want to test that prior to rolling it out to the class just to make sure that everything syncs and connects and make sure you're testing it on a student device, not necessarily your teacher computer. That's going to have different settings possibly. Uh, coming up here, looking at this menu up above, we have our home button. We have now this. So if I jump into a project, it will take me kind of to that. So let's, uh, let's look at this robust structures one, because that was one that we looked at on the other video. So here I have the grade level, the time, the skill, what it's going to be about. Now this is students see this as well. So now this video right here, this is the same video that's on the web version of this lesson plan. Remember we talked about the, there's the web version and the PDF and the, there's some differences in terms of like the standards, whether they're written out or whether they're not, and also whether the videos. So you could watch the video as a class or you could have the kids watch the video independent, or individually, independent, individually, kind of fused there. And they can, but they can click through this. Here we have this initial kind of uh, getting started activity and it says share your ideas using the documentation tool. That is this little pen right up here. And this opens up and it gives them an option of an image, adding a video file or adding now, 
if I click on either one of these, it's just going to open up, uh, it, it's basically the Windows box looking for my video file or looking for the image. Uh, the document will bring up and I can type my notes. Very limited formatting things here. As we come down, you can add in images or pictures. Again, they already have to be saved to the device. Uh, there are the ability to add kind of different page layouts. So you could have a description and the picture side by side, which is really nice. So basically this documentation tool, you know, I, I think it's cool that, that Lego has it. You could certainly use it. I don't think it has a huge amount of benefits over using just something like a Google Doc to have them take their notes in it. The downside, you know, with this is how do we get, if the kids are taking their notes here, how do we get them out? So there is an export button and it basically offers you the ability to export this as a picture or as a PDF. So obviously, you know, both of those have some, some severe restrictions in terms of just my ability as a teacher to comment and respond. So I might really issue the uh, documentation tool here and move to like a Google Docs or Google Slides even because Google Slides is going to handle uh, video and pictures in a little easier to use format. Um, I really, I think a lot of times, especially in terms of doing with images, I'm going to lean more towards Google Slides versus Docs, but I think I would use one of those two options. Certainly, you could do this. Now, within here, let's talk about across the board so we jump back to, we can come back to our lesson using that. This little button right here is going to take us back to this home screen. Go back in that lesson. There we go. We have this jumps us to how to build individual models. I provided a link. Now these are, are some of these are just for fun. I mean we see like the garbage truck and stuff like that. So a lot of different models. We have a whole library here of how to do things. So this is a great resource. So this is a good place maybe to point the kids in a direction if they're looking for additional help or additional assistance. Some really cool, you know, send random messages, parallel tasks, some really cool ones as we get further down in kind of the more advanced category. I mentioned the fact that there is this documentation tool that you can insert images and pictures from. Well, this is where you can get some of those pictures. The device's webcam. Now, right now, the webcam is being used by this video recording, so that's why it's not showing up. But I can take single pictures, I can take videos, so that's really exciting. I can also record an audio note. Now you can use this that the the robot can actually, in the there's a sound feature, this little sound icon. I believe if you choose sound zero, it's the recorded sound that you make. Now I haven't tested this, um, but it's a really cool little feature right there. And then last we have the help button over here, but it is a little bit of a mess. I know they apologize there. So projects down here, you can rename them, which is nice. You can copy and you can delete them as well. So what I did is I brought up a project that I had previously made, and this is going to control this little B bot. Now this does have sensors in it right here. I am not coding these sensors right now. I could have it where and when it sees the B as the B spins around, it will stop. For me right now, I just wanted to code the motor just to spin. So to set this up, I'm going to turn on my little smart hub here and you'll see it blinking. And then I'm going to click right here. It identifies it. Now I haven't tried this in a classroom environment with multiple people. So you may want to like, have one student at a time connect just so they don't see 10 different bricks. Now it doesn't ask me to, re okay, there you go. It asked me to rename it. I'm going to say not now. It's connected. I can name it. I see the battery life. If I connected to the wrong one, I can disconnect to that button right here. So now that I see a little green circle in this part, I know, and I want to move my video here. Uh, I have the stop button down here. I have the start button right here. So when I hit start, My little bee spins around. 
round and round she goes, and then I can hit stop. So, then once I'm done, I can disconnect. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to actually turn off the, it'll automatically power off, which is really nice. And then I can come back to the home screen. So this has been a little tutorial. The Lego We Do app. This is available from the software downloads page on the Lego site, which is linked in the Google Doc, which is linked below. So check that out. Check out the resources on the AOP Tech Lending Library page. I hope this has been very helpful for you. Aaron for AOP Tech. Have a great day.